Okay, um, hi. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over uh, templates in C++. Um, so we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to first try and give a little bit of what templates are for, you know, how, what their purpose is. And then we'll look at function templates. So uh, function templates are easier to understand uh, what they're for. And then we'll look at an example of creating a class template, okay? So hopefully I'll be able to um, show an example of building a, a class template uh, in this video. Um, and the, our class template we'll build will actually also use some operator overloading. So it's a combination of templates with operator overloading, okay? So this video is really a continuation of the um, the overloading video, so you should kind of watch that first, okay? So I'm starting right where we left off. I'm picking up right where we left off from there. So this is actually from the previous video where, where um, just to give you some context, so we had um, an example of overloading of functions. It was the last thing I kind of did in that video. So we had two functions in there to, to calculate the minimum um, so we had kind of one uh, simple function that would take two doubles and calculate the minimum of it. And then we showed that, um, you know, you could overload that, that function a minimum. So we also made it a, a version of minimum that worked with the, the complex number type that we had been developing uh, in, in that overloading video, okay? Um, and um, we showed that... Um, um, the overloading here down at the bottom that that you know if, if you called it with doubles you would get um, the the minimum of double numbers and if you called it with um, uh, complex numbers uh, it would it would correctly uh, show the result of that of, of, of calculating the minimum between two uh, complex numbers uh, uh, here so uh, there we go um, so Back to looking at these functions here. Um, so the idea for templates, uh, here's the basic idea. Um, wouldn't it be nice, instead of ha me having to rewrite essentially the same functions, I, know, I mean, it's a little bit different, um, uh, but essentially having to write the, the same function, you know, in order to compare two integers, two strings, um, two doubles, uh, two of my uh, complex number type, right? So that's really what templates are in C++, okay? Templates are a way to um, templatize certain parts of a function, okay? So the way I think of a template is, is it's really like a big macro, okay? So let, let's, let's look at a, a template. Let's templatize this minimum function. So we'll show an example of, of, um, of, a, of a simple function template. So you can do a, a template just for functions like these minimum functions here. Um, so let me change to my um, template project that I already have created here. Uh, there it is, templates. Um, and let's look at... Um, an example of a function template here, okay? So... Um, This is the, the basic syntax for creating uh, a template, whether you're creating a fun function template or a, a class template that we'll look at after this, okay? So we, we've got here this minimum function, but now instead of saying, like for the, the, remember the implementation for finding the minimum of two doubles, we passed in a double called left and a double called right, and if left is less than right, we return left, uh, otherwise we return the right one, okay? Um, so... So no, I mean, again, all this is um, is a. Um, I think of it as like a, a macro, or you know, a template is a good name for it. It's 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 saying that there's this thing called T. Uh, so now instead of doubles for my input parameters and returning a type double, we just generically are saying that I've got some function that takes some type, two types of type T and then it's going to do something and return a resulting of type T as well, okay? So what what C++ does, and, and this template mechanism in C++ happens at compile time. So if I actually use a function, uh, it will actually make a copy of this, but fill in T with the uh, actual types that I use, okay? 
So let's look at actually using this template here. So um, um, here is, is our first example. So if I call the function minimum, which is a template function here, and if I give it two integers in this case, so in this case, uh, left int and right int are integer types, okay? And the compiler can tell these are integer, type, integer types because C++ is a compiled language, so it knows that it needs to find a function whose signature is, I take two integers as, as input, and it returns an integer. So we assign this back into an integer, okay? So it finds, if I can go back to my template function here, it finds that, that I, you know, I don't exactly have that function, but I have a template that can take the, these two types. If I just copy this template, so if I was to take this and copy and paste it and replace the t's with int, then I would have my function of the, of the, of the correct sig signature, a function that takes uh, two integers as input and returns an integer as the result. Okay, so that's kind of why it's important. I've been emphasizing, you know, understanding the input parameters and the return type, and understanding what we mean by function signature. So, uh, to, to really understand what's happening with temp templates, you have to kind of uh, understand that idea of what a function signature is. Um, okay, so here we're using minimum that has a function signature of two integers as, as the parameters returns an integer. Um, and, and like I said, so the C++, th this happens at compile time, so what it does is since it found a template that can be used for this function, it makes a copy of that function, but it's as if we had replaced that T with integer integer, um, and, um, um, uh, and, and then compiled that function, but specifically with, with the signature of, um, so you can kind of see here, the, uh, the, it's the, the actual one is integer left and integer right um, um, is, is the actual function that's been detemplatized, okay, and, and that's actually been compiled by the C++ compiler. All right, so uh, uh, let me just build, make sure we're, we're building here um, and run it down to, just to show you that it works, right? So if we run it, it'll create a version of minimum that works with the integers. So the minimum of 5 and 10 is 5 from the output. And if we reverse the left and the right, just kind of another little test, but the reverse of those is also gets a minimum of 5. So it seems to be working, right? Um, so again, though, remember that the purpose of templates is I can just write the minimum function once, and any any time I want to use it, like if I want to use it for minimum of two double numbers, um, I can use that as well. So here, the second version, um, if you can uh, see it here, I mean it's going to take two doubles as my parameters, and um, will return a double result. Okay. So the signature slightly, and again, it, it's as if there's another copy of this function, uh, an overloaded version of minimum. So that's why learning kind of overloading before you talk about templates is important. So, so we've got a second version of minimum now that the compiler is going to create, but that takes two doubles as inputs and returns a double, okay? So and then we just test it out a, a couple of times again here. So um, um, uh, here, so notice... Um, uh, here, I mean, I can directly call the function. So even though these are these are uh, constant values, the inter the compiler, the C++ compiler, can see that these are need to be represented as double values. So again, it will use the version of minimum that takes two doubles as the input parameters. Okay, so that function still works. So the minimum of those two numbers is 5.55, and the minimum of these two numbers is negative 33.3. Um, there. So, um, and this will work for strings because the less than operator um, is defined for the string type. So, if you look at the implementation, so all we know is left and right are some type T that has to be templatized, you know, so a particular thing has to be substituted for my little name T here. But as long as left and right support an operator less than, this function will work for it, and strings report strings support the less than operator. Okay, so um, strings. If we have two strings like um, um, like like Derek and Billy, and if you do a, a, a less than comparison, so is Derek less than Billy? Uh, that will return false because for the string type, 
if you um, uh, do a less than, it supports all the Boolean operators, um, less than, greater than, equal to, but it does a lexi lexicographical comparison, so, so alphabetically, Derek comes before Billy, so uh, it'll be false that Derek is less than Billy, so minimum will say that uh, Billy is the, the smaller item, or it should. So let's, uh, let's run it down to that point. So yeah, so the, the, the minimum of the string, Derek and Billy, is Billy, so, so it correctly um, found that, okay? And, you know, the, and, and this minimum function will even work with user-defined types that you um, uh, define, again, as long as it supports like a less than operator. So I don't think I had this in the previous video where we were building the complex number and overloading some operators, so we overloaded like... Uh, plus and minus uh, for the complex number, but we can add it. So um, I, I added a less than operator. So let, let me um, let me look at the, uh, the the less than operator for our complex number here. So um, I just kind of rec recently discovered this function. That this the the solution explorer has now a nice outline, so you can more quickly kind of directly go to your things for a complex number. Uh, we can look at the, the less than operator that we added to it. So for a complex number, we have an overloaded, overloaded uh, operator less than that compares this complex number to uh, a, a number on the right-hand side, another, another complex number. So basically, this does the same thing as the minimum function I had shown as overloading, but it does it as, a, um, uh, as an overloaded um, member, uh, overloaded operator less than member for my complex number function, okay? So again, if the real part is less than, um, uh, in this case, the Boolean operator, operator less than, operator greater than, I didn't, I didn't overload any of the other Boolean operators yet, but um, those, those always return a Boolean result. So we ask, is, is this less than the right-hand side? If it is, if the real part is less than, we return true. Um, if the real part is greater than, we return false, but if they're equal, we get down to this part, and then we um, default back down to the imaginary part, okay? Um, anyway, so, so back to this, um, um, the, uh, the, 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 the template function for minimum, since the operator less than is defined for my complex number type, I can instantiate uh, a template of, of this function minimum for my complex number type, okay? And that's um, exactly what's happening down here at the very last thing. Um, so, um, you know, if we have complex numbers and we ask for the minimum of my left number and my right number, which are of the complex type, it will invoke the overloaded operator less than for my complex number to give a Boolean result. Um, and then minimal will be able to use that to determine which of these is less than. So since it uses the real part first, it should say that my that this left number is the the one that's less than the right number. So, so that should be the res excuse me the result that we get. So yeah, this output here, the minimum of of this complex number and this complex number is that one. That's a smaller one because the real part is smaller. Um, all right, so that's that's the, the the basics of a function template. All right, so again, I mean, two two things just to kind of summarize to, to remember about this. So, template is kind of like a, a macro, or a template is a good name for it. But this happens at compile time, so um, so I won't actually do this. But it, as if the, the the best way to understand it, the way I understand it is. Any time I make a function, it'll compare the signature, and if it needs to, you know, if I need to make a function template for um, um, a float, it'll just replace T everywhere with float and compile that function. But this has to happen at compile time, okay? So we'll, we'll get that resulting function um, uh, if I need a version of it that works with float, okay? And because uh, overloading a function works just fine in C++. Uh, it's fine to have multiple versions of the minimum function as long as the signature for the function um, is different. Okay, let me remove that. Um, all right, so uh, using templates for um, um, 
for functions can be useful, but it's really it, it really becomes powerful if we use templates for classes. So especially when we're building abstract data types, I'd like to, to make a list abstract data type, and I think this is what your assignment for this week is going to be, um, even though there's an example of, of, of creating a list uh, template class um, in the, uh, the textbook uh, for this week as well. But we'll create our own version of the list that'll be slightly different. But you'd like to create like a list abstract data type, but not have to write, um, you know, copy and paste your code so it works one version that works for lists of integers and one version that works for lists of strings and so on, right? You just like to write it once and for all and then templatize it so that it works for any type. It holds a list of any type that the user might want to uh, use it for, okay? So, but before we do that, let's, the way I usually, because I will agree that the, the syntax for templates, especially when you try to use a class template, can get it's not great, right? So, so it's very verbose, um, and, and there's a lot to be desired from, from from looking at it and trying to read it, okay? So to me, the easiest approach to templatize a class is to first just make an, uh, an impl implementation of the class that uses one particular type, like, like a simple type, like, like an integer type. Then once you have that working, just templatize it piece by piece um, so it works with uh, any type, okay? So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Hopefully this video won't be too long, but, but uh, and I'll try and post both of these. So ver the, the initial version of Vector before we templatize it, um, and then um, a version of Vector uh, after we templatize it, okay? So the, the, the version I'm starting with, with um, a Vector, so this isn't list, this isn't what your assignment. So, uh, just an overview, the vector class is supposed to be like a mathematical vector, so I want to be able to do things like think of the vector as like a series of numbers or a series of items, kind of like a list, but, but still. Uh, so, so things that you can do with series is like sum series, so do summations or series, or do what's known as a series product, okay? Um, and I wanted to be able to do uh, what are known as vector scalar operations with these vectors. So if I have like a vector of integers, um, I want to be able to multiply that vector times uh, a simple integer number. So my vector times 5. The result of doing a vector times a scalar should be just that I multiply each item in the vector times that scalar number. So I, if, if I'm multiplying my vector times 5, each item in the vector should be multiplied by 5. Okay. So like I said, uh, uh, initially I, d I just start off with a vector, a simple class that uh, you know that, that should be somewhat familiar with. Uh, we are using, we are going to use dynamic memory allocation uh, again in this one. So when you construct this vector, you give it a, a regular array of integers of some size, and then you use that to uh, be your initial items for the vector. Okay. And then we have the, 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 the member functions that I talked about. So we have like a summation, a product, and difference function. We overload uh, some operators, um, plus and, and mul multiplication, plus and times, to do vector scalar operations. I'll, I'll talk about the less than later. Um, and kind of as usual, I overload the output operator to, um, um, to so we can easily represent vectors um, on our output stream, okay? Um, and I probably shouldn't go through these, so, so you know, we've, we've had similar examples to these, so I won't spend a lot of time on the actual implementation of all those functions. So, you know, our constructor takes the, the array as input, dynamically allocates a, a list of items, I should have pointed out. So, you know, we've only got two private member variables, so one that keeps track of the number of items that are in the vector, and then um, what's going to be an, actually an array of integers to hold the actual items. So our constructor dynamically allocates uh, an array of integers big enough to hold the items that are being initialized, and we just copy those over. We're, we do, we're, good, uh, we're good memory managers, so we have a destructor that actually deletes those dynamically allocated uh, array of integers whenever the vector um, goes out of scope. Um, so, you know, summation simply just adds up. So, so we start off... Uh, although you have to be a little bit careful, so um, I did it this way because if I was just doing this as a vector of integers, I, I wasn't planning on templatizing this, I would just start off with my sum. Uh, sigma is often used when you're doing summations in mathematics. That's kind of why I chose that variable name. So I would just start off with sigma as zero and then just went from index zero up to 
uh, the number of items, okay? Uh, but uh, s s when I templatize this, I don't exactly know what my types are going to be, so I, I just do a slight variation. I start with sigma being to the first value uh, in the list, uh, in, in my items, and then I subsequently add up each item from one up to the number of items, okay? Um, so both should get the same result for integers. But it can be a little bit tough um, for some types where you, where the idea of what, what does it mean to have uh, the, a null or, or zero item. So, like if I have a vector of strings, I mean, I, I mean in that case it should be I should initialize it with an empty string instead of zero. So, so I need to initialize slightly differently. Um, and then we have the others. So um, maybe I'll just choose uh, my, one of my vector scalar operations and talk about that quickly as well. So for a vector scalar operation, we want it to return a new result. So we, we don't want it to actually change this vector item, vector of integers right now. We want it to, um, uh, so, so we, we create a new result, um, and then every item in this new result, we just add, the, the, so this is doing the scalar operation, so value plus each item in the new one. So, so notice we, we made a copy of result <coughs> of the items in this um, vector. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And then we do our scalar operation, then we return that as a result. So you have the same pattern for the um, vector multiplication and, and so on. All right, so let's just show that that works. Um, so, um, and I also overrode, uh, I have a friend function to, to, allow, to allow the vector to be out, <coughs> to be output to the output stream here. So if we step over those, um, we create a vector with five integers in it, and um, we display it. So, so that was our vector with five integers, and um, um, and yeah, I'll just show all these. So if we um, if we do our summations, you know, so the the um, summation of one plus two plus three plus four plus five is fifteen. The product of this series is five times four times three times two times one is one hundred twenty. The difference of this series is 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5. Uh, so uh, the scalar addition, v plus 7, it should add 7 to each one of these items. So we end up with 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And scalar multiplication. Oh, and, and you know, notice that after doing this, if we display uh, v again, it didn't. This created a new vector with these results of adding 7 to every item. Um, but vector v, the original vector, is still the same. It wasn't, it wasn't modified. Only a new one was changed. Likewise for multiplication. So if I multiply these items by negative three, we get that new result. Okay, um, and less than also works. If I ask for all the values that are less than four, one means true. So uh, one, two, and three are less than four, and four and five are, are not less than four. So. Um, Okay, so let's try and templatize these. So I'm going to create like just a new file, um, um, uh, just so I can copy and paste the, the stuff out here. So we have just like a new empty um, um, text file. So let's start with our header um, here. I'll put this over here. I'm going to close off my complex number. We're not going to do anything with those um, uh, at the moment here. So in my header, um, uh, we'll come back and, and implement, implement all of these, but, but uh, I don't initially want to have these, um, although we'll also uh, implement the, uh, the, the, the two-string method so we can display it. So that, that'll, that'll be our first task. So get the constructor to work uh, with the template version of vector um, and get the output stream operator to work. All right. And um, um, let me do the, the same thing for um, let me just take all those out of uh, vector.cpp. Uh, I'll put that besides vector there. So vector cpp, I'm only going to modify it so that our constructor is working and destructor. Um, and then we'll try and get the output operators working. Um, if I was being, if I, if I was trying to be a little bit more careful, I wouldn't even work on the output operators. Um, um, I would just get the constructor and destructor working first. So, 
In fact, in fact I'm going to change my mind. So um, I'll, I'll take those out as well. Uh, before I do that, though, I should paste these back here. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, Got to be careful. Uh, so I actually wanted to copy those first. Let's just copy everything here. There we go. Um, so now I can safely, since i got to copy all those, uh, let's just get the constructor and destructor and then everything below that. We'll, we'll remove here. So, um, and back to my um, uh, header here, since I kind of changed my mind. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. Just have our, our uh, class only have the constructor and the destructor. We'll come back to these parts uh, here. So, um, all right. So let me just um, you know make certain that this runs still. So it's always a, it's always a good idea to start from um, a known part so that you know things are running. So um, all these tests here. Um, I don't want to do any of these, um, including not this one. So just make certain that we can construct our our, um, our object. So um, I'll just comment those all out as well. So edit advanced uh, comment selection. There we go. Um, all right. So this should build um, because, I mean, I haven't done my template yet. I've just... Um, taken out everything except for the constructor and the destructor. So let's make certain that builds and runs. Get rid of that breakpoint. So yeah, it built okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and yeah, and just run it just to just to confirm it runs. So we, 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 we still have the outputs from the minimum, but nothing else. All right, so let, let's templatize the constructor, uh, which is what we're trying to do here, okay? Um, so um, <coughs> if you want to templatize, uh, you know, make, make a class into a, cla into a template class, uh, you use that same kind of syntax. Uh, so you say template class T like that, okay? Um, and um, so again, this is just saying that um, I'm going to make this into a template. Um, and um, uh, so, so it's kind of like a macro. And I've got this little macro variable called T. So in, instead of using actual integers, I want my class to um, uh, use whatever this type T is. So if I make a, an actual instance of my template for integers, it'll replace the, the int by T and the int by T. So, I, so you, your first step is you have to go back and find all the things that need to be templatized by this class type, okay? Now here, I mean, I am going to pass in a new array of the type T, whatever it is, but but the number of items is still an integer, okay? So, I mean, you do have to understand the, the difference on these parameters. We're not going to pass in, you know, if I'm making a, a vector of strings, um, I might have five strings. So, so you know, I, I, I have to pass in an array of strings here array of strings, but, but I, I need to indicate that there's five strings, so this is still an integer, okay, so hopefully that's, that's clear. All right, and then, so that's basically it, yeah, so, so we've templatized our, um, our, um, um, our, our constructor uh, function here. Um, so, um, let's, so, so you have to do a, a you know similar thing for each each of the functions that's a member function. You have to templatize it like we did the minimum function as well. So so you have to turn each of the member functions into a template function, um, in, in templatize function. Oops, uh, in case doesn't matter, so it's lowercase class t, um, and you know. Uh, um, I'm not certain if, if actually the name that you give for your template class has to be consistent or not. 
um, and, and uh, I'm breaking, and I also am breaking my normal rule of trying to make these um, meaningful variable names. So, so here T represents our templatized uh, type that we want to use, but I do often prefer to use small names for these these template types because if you don't, things get even worse to kind of in terms of readability. Okay, so. Um, now, um, since I've vectorized, since I've templatized my vector class, uh, what you have to do is you have to specify that the name of the class is no longer just vector; it's vector of some type t. Okay, so so you don't really see that here, but but because of this here, when I instantiate a, a new version of this class, it's not going to just call it vector. So so you can't actually overload uh, the names of user-defined types. That's why, so you can overload function names, like minimum, you can have multiple versions of function, but I can't have multiple versions of vector. I have to have, like, different names for vectors. So I have to have vector of ints or vector of strings. So that's the way I normally read this here. So, so when, it, when it makes a copy of my vector template, it's going to have vector the, the left arrow, right arrow, or less than, greater than of t. So it'll replace t with, like, int or string or whatever we're... Uh, instantiating our template, the, the type we're instantiating our template with. So, so it's no longer just a vector, it's a vector of some type T. Okay? Um, and then now, as we did before, you know, the, the, the first parameter is still an integer, but the second parameter is a array of some type T that's being passed in. Okay? Um, so num item still gets uh, assigned to the integer. Uh, oh, and, and uh, I just realized, um, oh, um, and I made a bug though. So, so yeah, the, the, for my same argument here, uh, num items is not um, uh, type T, it, it's an integer. So the, it's the number of items, uh, an integer value in my array of items of type T. Okay, so whoops, bug there. I caught it before I actually had a compile error. error. So, uh, so yeah, this assigns the integer parameter that we pass into that integer num items. This instantiates a new array, but again, we don't need a new array of integers. We new, need a new array of this type T, but this will just be replaced by the C++ compiler with whatever type that we're trying to create uh, a, a, an actual uh, instance of our vector class of. So if I have, an, if I have a, temp, a vector of, of integers, that'll go, go back to integers, but if I have a vector of doubles, I'll, I'll be creating an array of doubles in that case. All right. Um, and this should work. So again, all of these member functions depend on the operators working for the class that you instantiated of. So as long as assignment works between items of type T, so if I have integers, of course it works. So, so this will be an array of integers and, and I'm just assigning each one, copying each one from here to here. If I have if doubles, it'll work. If I have um, a template of my complex numbers, if I've uh, uh, if I've defined the assignment operator for my complex numbers, this should work. My constructor here, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think I hit everything that I need to for my constructor. Um, you have to templatize every member function, so even the destructor, every one. So we're saying vector is no longer a, um, the, the vector destructor is no longer just a regular member function, it's a member function of the template class, vector of some type t. Uh, and that's our vector. Um, and, and yeah, so this doesn't have to, I mean, items is just whatever of type t, and that will correctly free up those items of, you know, this array of, of our type t here that we dynamically allocated. All right, so let's try that. So if I successfully templatized everything, uh, and then one final thing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we are including our, our vector.hpp file. Um, so see, Visual Studio already um, um, maybe um, um, recognizes that something uh, is wrong here. So, so here's, if you want to actually use, instantiate an instance of a, template class, 
the, the syntax is like that. Okay, so so now it's no longer just vector. The name of the particular macro or the particular version of, of my template, if I want a vector of integers, is a vector of int. Right. So now it's to create a vector of integers, and um, um, this should correctly be able to take in. Uh, an integer for the first parameter, but a, an array of integers for the second parameter to be the initial values for my vector, okay? So if I did that correctly, it should still build, um, and it didn't build, so I messed up something. Um, So um, in this case, we have an unresolved um, um, uh, so, so it, it, you know reading this, you know, so I know it takes it takes um, you know some experience to figure these out. So it's it's having problems with the constructor and the destructor. Uh, so I can kind of tell that it really wants my second parameter to be. Um, uh, a constant parameter um, here. Um, although, oh, the, in, in, you know, let's, let's think of these as unresolved. Um, so I'm not certain if it's actually uh, um, um, correctly. It looks like it is compiling vector.cpp here. Um, let me pause um, and figure that out, and I'll come back here on this video in just a second. Okay, um, so um, so I figured out, um, and, and I meant to talk about this. Um, so at the bottom of your HPP header file, um, you actually have to put a, a, an include statement. Okay, so. So, so let me try and explain uh, why this is, uh, and, and maybe you should also read our textbook on page 920. It talks a little bit about this. So I, I, I was trying. To, I, I was. I did emphasize kind of what's happening with templates. Um, so you know, it, it, the compiler does this at compile time. It makes a copy of this and instantiates it with the int. Because of that, it needs to make a copy not just of your declaration, but it has to make a copy of your declaration and all these implementation functions. So these need a copy as well, uh, and where the copy is, is replaced, the, the T is replaced with the particular type that you're instantiating. So that means that you can't quite, you can't just really put your, your implementations in a separate file for a template class like is, is considered correct or standard for just regular classes that aren't using this template method. So there's, it, it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's ugly, um, you know, because templates were kind of tacked on to the C++ language, which had tacked on other things to the C language. Um, so, but, but this is, this is the way, this is one way that this kind of normally standardly done for this. So, um, Instead of kind of including vector.hpp in vector.cpp like we did and, and, and assuming that we're going to separately compile the vector.cpp file, uh, we kind of re reverse that for a template class. So um, if you go down to the bottom of the file, and, and I'm going to post these the, after I've, you know, the, the, the final, the, the version before I added, made it a template, and the version after, I'll post that with this video. So normally what you do for a template class is you actually include vector.cpp, and, and actually a lot of people don't call this cpp anymore. They call this like tpp for a template C++ file. Um, um, I'm probably going to leave it at cpp because for Visual Studio, uh, it, it won't colorize and, and it, it won't treat it as, a, as if it's C source code if you call it anything but CPP or HPP. So, um, but if we include that, so again, remember the include instruction, all it does is copy the contact, content of vector.php in this, which is what we want. So you end up with all your implementation of your um, member, of your templatized member functions right here. Um, and then the normal thing is, is yeah, we take out this include in the actual uh, place where we've implemented our uh, member functions. 
Um, and that should be all that we need to do, okay? So if we include those, one final thing then, so vector.cpp is no longer really a file that you should compile separately, okay? So these, these member functions um, uh, are really um, patterns for a class template, okay? So we shouldn't try and, and send this to the compiler separately. So whatever IDE you're using, you have to actually remove vector CPP from um, your build system. So uh, you could do that by renaming it like to vector.tpp, so a lot of IDEs then. Um, but, but if you've added vector.cpp into the build system, you might have to explicitly go and remove it from the files to be built. Um, so if you, just have, if, I, if you write, for Visual Studio, if you right click on a file, Go to properties and under general, um, C plus plus general. I guess it's just under general. <coughs> um, you can tell it to exclude files from the build, so so they're still part of the project, but they won't it won't try to compile this file anymore. And, and I think you do have to do that. Okay. So anyway, if you do those those steps, so um, to summarize, uh, so you need to include the the actual implementation of these templatized member functions at the end of the header. Um, and then you don't want to include the header file anymore since we're including it in a slightly different way now. And then you do need to remove this file. Make certain it's not trying to build that. Um, and then if you do those, that should fix everything. Let's see. Um, yeah, so there. For, for me, for Visual Studio, that, that works. Um, and we should be able to run it. Um, again, we're still not doing anything, uh, but, but we are successfully building and we are successfully creating an instance of a vector of ints class, okay? So creating an instance of this vector, uh, of this templatized vector class here, all right? Okay, so let's try and get um, the, the output stream operator working so that we can see that our vector of ints are actually working. So I want to I wanna, uh, get the... Um, the uh, the two string member function and the overloading of the output stream operator vectorized successfully. So I'll just put those back into my header. And we will put, uh, let's find the uh, implementations of two string that we had before we made these into templates. Um, and put those back at the end of our actual vector.cpp. Um, all right, so our two-string method um, is, you know, relatively simple compared to the next one we'll have to do. So uh, again, anytime you want to templatize a function, we, we need to put that little template uh, syntax in front of the function. And now this this two string is not just a member of a vector; it's a member of a vector of of some type t, vector of t. All right. Um, and in this case, um, I don't think we need to change anything else. So number items is still an integer, um, so that should output fine. Um, and we loop through and output all the items, but again, you know, whatever item, whatever the type the items are of, as long as uh, so we, we do have to make certain that the output stream operator works for our uh, I, well, the type of, of the items that we're templatizing. But if that works, if it's true that we can send, uh, you know, so if we have a if we have a vector of integers, you can just send integers to the output stream. It already knows C++ knows how to do that. If I want to have a vector of my complex numbers, I have to make certain that the output operator is overloaded uh, for this function, my two string function, to work here. Okay. Um, but uh, I think that's all we need for two string. Uh, now let's look at, um, so I didn't show here, um, um, oh, um, to templatize the, a friend the, the, the output stream friend function, There's various ways to do this. I should probably post this, um, and and this really gets ugly. I don't like this, uh, but this is again a, a result of templates being kind of tacked on to the C++ system. So this this is just how you have to do it. So 
the, the, we have to declare a different uh, template um, macro, um, um, and I shouldn't use T. I need to use a different name so it doesn't get confused here. Um, and what I'm saying is that this friend function, it, it still takes an output stream as the first parameter, but it takes a vector of some templatized U. Okay, um, and now this will make it work, okay? Uh, this is ugly, but yeah, we have to do this. And then um, my um, my my friend my overloaded friend function here. Oops. <laughs> if I can type, um, I should be able to do that. And that, that's all you need to templatize it correctly. So basically we're saying for this friend function it looks mostly the same except there's a vector of some template type u that comes in here. right? And, and as long as this vector has a two-string method then my overloaded operator will work um, uh, uh, here. All right? which should work fine because my vector of type t's, I, I'm adding a two-string method that, that uh, should work no matter what the, the vectors uh, that I have of, okay? So again, this, I'm not calling like vector on ints, I'm calling, I'm not calling two-string on like a regular int or something, so this is a vector of type u. So as long as my vector of type t has a two-string method that I can call, um, everything should be fine here, okay? So let's see if that works. Um, so I saved those, um, and let me uncomment this so we can try it out. Um, so, so here I'm trying to send my vector of integers to the, the, the friend, the overloaded output stream operator. All right. Let's see if we build. Yes, and um, let's run. So the result should be that. So this is coming ultimately from my two-string method uh, for my vector of int classes. All right. So, so if we go back and look at the the two-string method um, uh, here. It outputs number of items, which is five, and then in the loop down here, um, it outputs the items, uh, all the items here. We had to make a little special check so that if the, uh, I'm, I'm trying to put the commas afterwards, so in order to have the commas appear afterwards, have it look nicer, we, we print out the first item, and then after that we print out a comma followed by the next item, so that the last item in the list is just comma something, comma, and then last item, and then we can close it off on the display with our square brackets, all right? So that was, so, so we successfully templatized our two-string method and our friend function here. It's a little ugly, uh, but, but that, there, there's other ways you can actually do this. This is kind of the way I prefer for, out, for templatizing the output stream operator. Um, all right, so let's, let's work on uh, the, the next ones in two batches. So let's, let's do all of these uh, things to like sum and find the product of a series of items here. Um, so let's just put those in um, to our class declaration, our template class declaration here. Um, so again, now in this case, uh, when we sum these up, so if we sum up a series of doubles, the result should be a double. And if we sum up a series of strings, the result should be a string that's been concatenated together. So doing plus, adding all the strings together. So here, uh, for template, you know, so this is not returning uh, simple ints. It's returning whatever the template type is of, of our template class. All right. Um, and then let's get the implementation to those. So um, for Uh, for our sum product and difference, we had these methods. So I'll copy those in um, after the, right after the destructor. 
I always like to have two blank lines b between the end of every function and the next, um, the start of the next thing, whatever it is. So, um, all right, so let's turn these all into um, template number functions. So starting with summation. So. Um, So this is not just not just a vector; it's a vector of some type t, um, where um, so again our result, whatever we're summing up, is going to be a new. It's going to be a result of summing up all the items in our series. So so it's a it's a the, the, the type should be of t here. So and this is what I talked about. Uh, so um, to initialize this, kind of the best thing or to do in this case. Now that we've templatized things is to start off that the, the, my sum is going to start off being initially whatever the first value is. Um, and um, I just realized this is a little bit buggy. Uh, if I have a vector of zero of, of no length, of zero items, this will actually crash here or could potentially crash. So I should actually check that my length is, is uh, at least one before doing this. Um, I, won't, I won't do that, but, but we'll do that um, in here. Um, um, oh, uh, yeah, so that, that message is correct here, too. So the result of this is going to be returning a T, like I showed in the, the, the header class for all these. So it's result, returning an item of, of a new item of that type T here. And, yeah, I think that did it. So, so we return a new T. We keep a running track of summing the T's up, and then the loop sums those, those items up of type T from our items array of type T. Um, so that was, uh, so we need, should, should have to do a similar thing for each one of these. So, so our product is going to return a T. Um, the products are going to be of type T. Initially, it should be the first item in there, and then we're going to multiply by each item one through the end and return it. Oh, um, and it, this is a vector of, of, of t's here. Um, and our difference returns t's for our vector of t's. Okay, and I think that's it, if I got everything. So, so we've now implemented um, our three functions for uh, doing the summation, the product, and the difference of a, um, a vector event, of a vector of our template class of type T, whatever the type T is. So int in our case here. Okay, so if we build... So, um, uh, oops, uh, yeah, I made a mistake there. So, um, I changed uh, while I was typing here. I got went too fast. So that's that should just be the, the name of the variable. Let's see, did I do it here too? No, I don't know why I, I did it there. So, so um, yeah. So when you're when you're replacing, you do have to kind of keep in mind what you're doing. So when I'm replacing my actual. If, if you're doing the method like I described here, so starting off with just a regular vector that handles int and then templatizing it, um, um, so you have to replace the right things, templatize the right things. So, is templatize a word? So, um, uh, uh, see, so I think I fixed that. All right. So now my summation, product, and difference should work. So again, I mean, this was working before we started templatizing, so we should be getting that same result now that after we templatize. So my vector events, the um, the summation is just 15, the product of those num of that series is 120, and the different one minus two minus three minus four minus five gives you negative 13 for, for this particular case. Um, all right. So and finally, wrapping up here, um, let's let's templatize our last things, our vector scalar. Um, operations. I think that was our last things that we have to do. So I'll do these all as a group as well. Um, 
So um, am I going to implement uh, a scalar addition and scalar multiplication and also a scalar Boolean comparison here? So we overload those as member functions so that we can add uh, a scalar value like a, 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 to our um, operator, um, to, to our vector, or, or, uh, or multiply our vector by a scalar value or compare it. But um, again, so um, um, in this case, we're returning not a simple vector, but a vector that's templatized by our T for all these. So, so all these will create a new vector. So, so they won't do, they won't change this vector. They'll, they'll create a new vector and return it. So that's why we're returning a reference here. Uh, and they don't take an integer. They take um, a value, some value of type T to do the uh, addition or multiplication or to compare it against. Okay. Um, Okay, so that should be the basics for that. Um, and I'll just copy over our original implementation before we templatized um, all these back into vector.cpp. Put it after difference. So, um, yeah, so I'll have to do all these, but um, um, so we're returning a vector of t's now. This is a member of vectors of t's, uh, and we take a t as an input. So, um, kind of like we were doing before, we create a pointer to a vector of t's to hold the result, and we, we create that dynamically because we want to return a reference to that. Okay, so, so we're actually creating a whole new, we're allocating memory to hold, to hold a whole new vector of t's here. Um, and, and we initialize it with our items. So we initialize it with the, the size of this number of items, and, and the actual items actually get copied in here um, uh, when we dynamically allocate this vector of t items here. Uh, and then this should work to actually do our, um, um, our our scalar addition. So each value gets added to uh, the original items in the new resulting item. So not in this, but in the new item that we're going to return here. Uh, and I think that should do it. Um, So let me just uh, check here, because I've done this before, so I want to make certain, um, I think they were right. So, um, so yeah, let's do the other one. So, um, so we're returning a reference to a vector of t's. Uh, this is a member function of vector of t's. Um, and for our scalar multiplication, we're going to be multiplying by a single value of t, our, our series of items. Um, okay. That's, that's why I was complaining. Yeah, so, so even I forget the, the syntax. Uh, so hopefully that's better. There we go. Uh, at least Visual Studio isn't complaining anymore. Um, all right. Less than operator is a little bit different. Uh, you know, I just threw this in as an example. So, But, but again, um, it's a template of some class type. Uh, so we're actually, for, for, for doing the comparison app operator, I really want to return 
um, a vector of booleans. Okay, so, so I mean, I want the result. I want to uh, I want to do a scale a comparison between each value and the value, that, the single value that we pass in, and the result is either true uh, if, if the value in our series is less than the va than this value we're comparing to, or it's false if the value in our vector is is greater than or equal to the value that we're comparing to. Okay, uh, and I should have mentioned, you know, all for all these, you have to have the operator defined, so the plus equal operator, the time equals operator, the less than operator, or else these functions won't work for whatever type that you're using. Um, so anyway, my, my my Boolean operator less than looks a little bit different, so I, I'm, 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 I should always be returning a, a resulting vector of Boolean instead of a vector of the same type after doing the scalar operation in this case. Um, but we are comparing, comparing to type T here. Um, and um, so my result is going to be an array of Booleans now um, after we do this. And then when we compare each one, we put it in there um, and our vector of booleans we, re we return by, by creating a new vector of booleans uh, here. All right. So I may or may not have gotten everything. The other thing, though, is, is yeah, my, um, um, uh, uh, my definition of this is a little bit different. So, so because of, of, of how I want this operator, less than operator work, I actually want it to return a vector, a specific vector of a specific type, vectors of bools, instead of vectors of, um, of, of the, the same type T. So it's, so it's actually changing a different kind of result here. Uh, so that might be right. Let me just see if it builds. doing all those. Okay, so we build. Um, so let's try it out. So, addition, multiplication, and a Boolean comparison. So scalar addition, scalar multiplication, and doing a scalar a Boolean less than comparison here. So we built. So uh, adding seven to each item, um, scalar addition, we get eight, nine, ten, twelve. Uh, notice uh, again, you know, just just to, to illustrate this, that the original vector v shouldn't change. So the result of v plus seven is to create a new vector and return that new vector, which is what's displayed here. But afterwards, the, the original vector v hasn't changed. So if you print out v, it's still the same. It should still be the same after all these as well, if, if these were implemented correctly. So scalar multiplication, multiplying by negative 3, we get the result. And, and we are returning an array of Booleans now. So if we check which items in the array are less than 4, the first three are less than 4, so those are true. And then uh, this item and this item are, are greater than or equal to, so those return a, a false result. Um, okay. All right, so let's, I mean, so, the, so we haven't done anything yet now except for, we've, we've templatized our class, but, but we've only shown it using a vector events, which is what we had before. It was working fine for if I just wanted a vector events. And if, if you don't, you know, need to have like a, a class that holds, you know, different types or that can handle different types, then, then yeah, you, you don't want to templatize it for no reason. But, um, so let, let's, temp, let, let's test it uh, with a, a vector of complex numbers. So again, for this to work, um, I think I, I closed off my complex numbers, um, but um, um, the, the operators that we're using in our vector class have to be defined for our type. Um, and, um, um, and, and I added some, some from the last video where we had uh, created this complex number class. So in particular, I need not only just a plus um, and a minus and a, and a times for the, 
the summation and the product and the difference. I was actually using plus equal and minus equals and time equals, so we needed those operators overloaded as well. Um, and I needed a comparison operator, so I did add a, a, a less than operator so that the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the scalar less than uh, worked with complex numbers and so on. But, but if those are in there, then, 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 your, then your type will work. So I mean, you know, this should work. You know, so, so less than and plus equals are defined for all the built-in types. So this should work fine you know, for like a, a string um, and maybe I'll show a, a string real quickly too, but, but since I started on the complex numbers, let, let's try that. So if I want to have a vector of complex number, um, um, remind myself about something here for for the complex numbers yeah so um, I, I can create like a vector of, of complex numbers like we did here but we need to have something to initialize it with so I'll call this uh, a VCN uh, for vector of complex numbers um, so, but like I did before, I'll just initialize it with five complex numbers. So, um, so I'll still use a vector size of five, but I need to have an array of complex numbers. I need to call it something different than vector values, so I'll call it uh, VCN values. Um, and uh, we've got five of these, or vector size. So, um, I mean, I, I can um, um, just initially, I, I'll have to create some by hand here, five of these by hand. Maybe not the greatest way, greatest way to initialize these, but, uh, but if we create five complex numbers um, and, and put it in a, this initializer like this, it'll use these. We'll make them a little bit different here. So, let's say complex number of 1, 1, and of negative 1, negative 1, and of 3, negative 3, and negative 2, just, just so we get something a little bit interesting on output, and then maybe of negative, like that, okay. Um, All right, so that, that just creates a vector of complex numbers with, with five complex numbers in it. Let me make sure. This one, we need to, the, the copy constructor, uh, or, or actually just the uh, assignment operator has to work for, for this one to work. So when we're passing this array, remember, we copy over each value in the array into our new array that we dynamically allocate. So, so yeah, the, the, the copy operator um, needs to be defined for our complex number. Um, which is um, uh, the operator equals here, which we should, uh, not times equal, the operator um, equals is our, is our copy, um, uh, overloaded copy operator here. So, so um, anyway, that, hopefully that will compile. Um, yeah, and run. Okay, yeah, I'm not displaying anything yet, so. Um, so let, let's just show, I mean, um, yeah, and, and everything should work, again, assuming that the operators for complex numbers are there that, that we need, so. So a vector of complex numbers knows how to send itself to the output stream, since we templatize the output stream operator and the two string operator. Um, and since a complex number knows how itself how to, to uh, uh, 
put itself to the output stream. So, so we overloaded the output stream operator uh, in there as well. So that's why this, this works fine. Um, so that's our vector of our five complex numbers. Um, let's just do like a summation. Um, scalar operations so so in this case we do have to pass in another complex number um, all those scalar operations take another item of the same type so I'll just add four uh, four real part four for the negative four for the imaginary part See if that works. This is scalar in the sense that yeah, it's going to add this particular complex number to each of the uh, the, uh, co the the each of these five complex numbers in uh, our VCN um, uh, so-called VCN array here, VCN vector. So so yeah, there's this. That's hopefully the summation. Yeah, the summation of this should have been zero plus three minus two is one plus two point two eight. Yeah, so it looks like I mean that's basically doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, and here's our um, scalar addition of, of adding that number that we had to each one of these. So um, okay, um, I've probably gone a little bit too long, but just one more maybe. So how about uh, a vector of strings? Okay. So, um, so again, unless I add some more constructors, I do need to have like a um, array of strings. So, so oh, I'm going to call this S. Um, so my values can be. Um, So we can easily initialize strings with uh, just um, 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 with constant strings. So something like uh, lines a little long, but uh, don't have the semicolon in there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that'll work. So, so for example, the the um, uh, let's just make certain I haven't made any mistakes up to this point here, so we can still build and we can still run. So that should just display our vector of strings with alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon strings in there. Um, so, for example, I mean, plus um, is defined for strings, so I should be able to do summation, for example, um, because plus does a concatenation of strings. So, um, Message string, but yeah, it actually concatenated. So, so our summation function for strings works as like a, a big concatenation of all the strings in our series or in our vector here. 
Um, so, but mul multiplication isn't defined in right? So in hi some high-level languages, uh, the star is overloaded for strings to do uh, repetition. So if you wanted to repeat a string five times, you could repeat it. Um, but um, um, yeah, so I mean, let me just show you. So, but, but so you notice though, I mean, the operators don't have to be defined. So it actually did compile a, a vector of strings fine, even though it couldn't, it can't actually do all the operations. Uh, so um, if we did. If we did try to do, um, it should co catch this at the, the compile time because when it tries to instantiate a, a mem the member method product, the product is going to be using the times in there between strings um, and, and the operator star uh, is not defined for strings basically. Uh, so let's see if it does that. Yeah. So, so it does that. So, uh, but uh, I mean, it detects uh, that uh, doesn't define this operator uh, uh, here at the time, yeah, right, right there. So that, even though the message is not great, but that's that's what the problem is there. Um, although, yeah, the uh, like, like so, some other, like like our scalar uh, addition should work to add strings onto the each of the the you know to concatenate strings onto the each end of each one. So there's our scalar addition, just uh, uh, concatenating hello onto the end of each one of our strings. Um, all right, so yeah, that's we've probably gone quite a bit longer than I wanted to, but uh, but on the one hand, I mean, in this class, I mean, the the templates are going to be very useful. Um, uh, so this this class is about data types and kind of the way that you make abstract data types in C++ is to use templates. Okay, that's what, really what the standard template library is all about. So understanding this is going to be very useful to like the, the, the rest of this class, the second half. When we start making our own stacks and queues, uh, we'll, we'll use make template versions of them. We'll also learn how to use the, the standard template library later on that has versions of stacks and queues that's using basically these templates so you can have stacks of, of integers or stacks of doubles or whatever you need. So, um, All right, so, so yeah, the, the, we, we covered all these here today. Uh, we did function templates and class templates. Um, and we even lo looked at an uh, example of a class template where we had some operator overloading in there. So the syntax gets a little bit complicated. My, su my suggestion is usually to start with a non-templatized version and then templatize it piece by piece. You know, that, that's the way it usually works best for me. So, uh, okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful, um, and I will uh, see you in our next video.